Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Recently I was thinking of some things that are pretty C5 Corvette specific that really just make me scratch my head. Some are a little scary, some are kind of fun, and some just make me wonder. But all of these things are things that have happened to me often enough in the past eight years to absolutely make their way into this video. We're gonna talk about them and a whole lot more next. Toys for life. The first thing I wanna do is take a look at the back end of the C5. Is there a sticker back there that says, I wanna race everybody? I didn't think so, but that doesn't stop them from trying. Take this idiot, for example. Here I am just driving along and like gnats, they just come out of the woodwork. Actually, idiots like that are one of the fun things, as long as there's zero traffic around. You know, living in the Midwest, there is one thing about owning a C5 that just plain kind of sucks. I'll give you a hint. It's an annual tradition, and it takes place each year right around Thanksgiving time. Oh my gosh, they're after me! <laughs> that ritual is called winter, and it's basically like locking your C5 up in jail for about four months. I'm sorry to be such a bother, but I have to go to the little girl's room. Until things thaw out again in April. Once in a while, if I need the garage for a larger project, I'll back the C5 out into the driveway for a few hours. And it never ceases to amaze me that even if there's just a little bit of snow, it demonstrates how truly helpless this car is in the wintertime. But there is a bright spot. When spring finally rolls around, it's almost like you're getting a brand new car and that new car feeling starts all over again. Climb aboard. There you go. Your Corvette. And for six or seven months, you have your C5 back and life is good. You drive it, you race it, you wash it, and you enjoy the heck out of all of the different features your C5 has to offer. Hold up for a second, pause the video. Guys, if, if I'm being completely honest with you, I have to admit the C5 has two features that are just fantastic, but for some reason I never seem to use them. And the first one is this magnificently designed removable roof. Why don't I remove it more often? It's easy enough to take off. One latch in the back, two latches in the front, and GM has even blessed us with a storage area in the back where it fits like a glove. I honestly have no idea why the roof doesn't come off more often, but thanks to this video, it's off today. It's nice outside. So we're gonna take a little break and go for a spin. Man, that was fantastic. This Saturday or the next day, it's nice. Yank your roof off and take it out for a spin. I said there was two great features about the C5 Corvette that I don't ever seem to use. And the second one is head-up display. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the head-up display is absolutely fantastic. It can be customized to show voltage, oil pressure, water temperature, in addition to showing mile per hour and RPM. The best part is, it makes you feel like you're flying a fighter jet, especially at nighttime. Whatever the case, in over eight years of owning the C5, I have been unsuccessful at retraining my brain to take advantage of this useful tool, and that is a real shame. For those of you that have head-up display, is it something that you use often or are you kind of like me and generally forget that it's there? Leave a comment below. It'd be really interesting to see how often others actually use it. The next thing I'm going to bring up is actually a real gripe that I have. If I leave the C5 running with the transmission in neutral and the clutch pedal let out, it can be kind of noisy. Sometimes it even reminds me of an 80s pickup truck. 
I'm not even kidding just a little bit. Take a listen to this. Now to be fair to GM, my C5 is a manual transmission car with about 80,000 miles and I have an aftermarket monster twin disc clutch. All of those things together probably add to the noisiness. Now some of you may not know this, but the manual transmission C5s have the engine and the clutch up front. In the middle, there's a torque tube with a drive shaft that's actually inside the tube. And then in the rear, we've got the transmission and the differential bolted directly together. Now GM moved the transmission to the rear for at least two reasons. It takes weight off of the front axle and adds it to the rear axle, which aids in acceleration and also helps handling. Second, by moving the transmission to the rear, there's now more foot area room in the front part of the cabin because the tunnel can be a lot narrower since it doesn't have to house the transmission. Another C5 thing that takes a little getting used to is the possibility of a dead battery. If your schedule gets busy and you don't drive the C5 for a few weeks, there's a good chance when you go to start it, it might not want to. And here's why that happens. With all of the modules and electronic gadgets that the C5 has, even when it's just sitting there not being used, there's still a pretty decent amount of parasitic draw. So just for fun, Let's get out a multimeter and actually measure the amperage of draw just sitting there of the Corvette versus the 80s, basically stock Pontiac Fiero. To do this test, all I'm really doing is disconnecting the negative battery cable, and then I'm using my amp meter to complete the circuit where I can measure the draw in milliamps. You'll notice on the C5 when I first make the connection, the amperage starts out higher and it slowly drops down. That's the modules waking up and then they sense that there's nothing going on. So the modules kind of shut off till we get to a lower number. If we waited another half an hour, it might drop further. Switching over to check the Fiero, which by contrast has a pretty rudimentary electrical system. And the milliamps quickly drops down to zero on this meter is going to be less than 10 milliamps. And of course, this silly little thing has been talked about way too many times, so I'm not even going to mention it. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and recycle this scene because it happens as much today as it did just a couple years ago. There is one more C5 related topic that really makes me scratch my head, but it's a big enough topic and it deserves more than just a few seconds in this video. So that'll be a dedicated video coming out at some point in the future. Enough of my head scratchers. What about you guys? If you've owned your C5 for more than just a few years, let us know in the comments below what sort of C5 related topics really make you scratch your head. And hey, here's two last things that you definitely don't have to scratch your head about. Hit that thumbs up below, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and most importantly, thanks for watching.